What's up NZers? Hi! Hi! And welcome back to another family reaction video. Today we're going to be checking out something that kind of just goes along with the general American-like way of life, you know, mm -hmm. quirks. We've all got our quirks. We've all got our quirks. <laughs> <laughs> and today we're going to be checking out the top 10 things only Americans do and think it's normal. I'm interested to know if we do any of these things too. I'm pretty sure there will be some overlap. There'll be some things. Yeah, yeah. there'll be some crossover. Yeah. Surely. Anyway, this one's about 16 minutes long, so let's start it straight away, shall okay. we? Okay. Let's do it. If you don't like American, why don't you get out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You don't like America, okay, let's just start again. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting <laughs> down our picks for the top 10 things Americans do that the rest of the world doesn't. 15, right? Yeah. Yeah, I gotta call your parents. It's time. It's time. Uh, wait another minute for Claritin. Do you do medication every advertisements? Yeah. For this list, mm -hmm. we're going over the things that are more common in the United States of Tips. America than in most other countries. We While could probably some pick of them, them are present mm. elsewhere. They're not quite as widespread as in the U.S. And no judgment. This is supposed to be a lighthearted list after all. So keep a sense of humor and know that it's all in good fun. If there's a particular Americanism that our list didn't cover, please do tell us in the comments. Okay. <laughs> Number 10. Refer to the USA as America. America. I call it America. America. Yeah. Is that actually what happened? States of America, <laughs> referring to the country as America is much less commonplace. Huh. After all, there are two entire continents called America, comprising like 35 distinct nations. Referring to only one country on one of those continents as America too is really confusing for anyone who doesn't live there. From this day forward, it's going to be only America first. America first. Calling it the U.S., USA, the United States, or just the States is much more common in the rest of the world. Even so, everyone still calls its residents Americans, which isn't confusing at all. <laughs> you can't say it, but you know it's true. Number nine, have pharmacies that sell groceries. Yeah. In most of the world, pharmacies sell exactly what their name implies, pharmaceuticals. While you will see tangentially related items like grooming products or hygienic things like toothbrushes, pharmacies don't usually carry food or toys. But in the US, that's much more common. The country is all about the all-in-one experience. Not only will dedicated grocery stores have pharmacies built in, but pharmacies will also carry groceries. Granted, the selection wow. isn't always great, but if you're <laughs> desperate for milk and the grocery store is closed or you just don't feel like crossing the street to get there, Whoa. you can That's get nice. some. That's a big While milk. most of the world still limits drugstores to drugs and self-care products, we have a feeling this one might catch on. Number eight, vote before they can drink. Worldwide, oh, yeah. the age at which a person can legally drink alcohol is most commonly 18 the mm. age usually considered to be adulthood, though it is even earlier in some countries. The voting age on a global scale is also generally 18, for similar reasons. Although, of course, there are exceptions. The Voting Rights Act of 1970 lowered the voting age to 18 for national elections, and the 26th Amendment made the change to 18 permanent for all elections. And 18 is where it has stayed for the past 50 years. However, the United States requires young adults to wait three years after being able to vote before legally being allowed to drink at 21. This was enacted during the 1980s to prevent alcohol-related driving accidents. This law has been an abysmal failure. It hasn't reduced or eliminated drinking. It has simply driven it underground, behind closed doors, into the most risky and least manageable of settings. While it helped yeah, in the short that's term, 18 here. Mm -hmm. it hasn't really stopped teenagers from drinking. The I heard is, I heard them uh, one guy say, it's crazy how in America you can go and fight for your country but then come home and not even have a beer. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. That many people, both inside and outside the U.S., question the logic of why an 18-year-old American can decide who forms the government but not get buzzed. The reality <laughs> is everyone drinks before they turn 21. That's why when you go out for your first legal drink, you have to react with that faux surprise like you've never heard of alcohol before. <laughs> Ooh, what does this alcohol taste like? Mmm. Oh, it's unusual. Oh, this is true. <laughs> Number seven, tip service personnel. All right, everybody cough up some green for the little lady. Oh. 
Come on, throw in a buck. Uh uh, I don't tip. You don't tip? No, I don't believe in it. While the concept of tipping waitstaff or other people in the service industry is known worldwide, few countries have embraced the concept to the degree the U.S. has. Labor movements declare the practice undemocratic and anti-tipping legislation was enacted across several states. But restaurants and rail operators like the Pullman Company embraced tipping because it allowed them, among other things, to hire recently freed slaves without having to pay them. Many workers, particularly in the restaurant industry, rely on gratuities to get by, in part because laws allow managers to pay sub-minimum wages to tipped workers. However, uh, in various what? other countries, tipping is seen as insulting. They're just doing their jobs, after all. Each year, Americans spend $40 billion on tips. Wow. wow. That's more than we spend on foreign aid and more than we spend on gambling. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Like gambling, it's not entirely clear that tipping makes any sense in the first place. While some countries' workers certainly appreciate it, it isn't expected like it is in the U.S., <laughs> mostly because employees are paid a high enough baseline salary that they don't need tips to survive. Yeah. Restaurant owners still pay their servers less than minimum wage, turning what used to be a into an obligation that makes the end of every meal suck. Number six, obsess over the military. And I think I speak for the rest of the WWE. I certainly speak for myself. I would like to say thank you to all our men and women who choose to don the uniform of the United States military. The American military is probably the best in the world, as it should be, since it's also one of the best funded militaries in the world. In fact, the U.S. spends several times more on their military than their nearest competitor, China. What's more, there are more than a few American citizens who have a higher than average fascination with their own military and its culture. I thank you as, our, uh, as your commander in chief because you inspire me. Your willingness to serve, to step forward, at a time of war and say, send me, is the reason the United States stays strong and free. While other countries certainly appreciate their troops, you don't, say, see as many people wearing camouflage as a legitimate fashion statement. Likewise, you don't see movies made elsewhere that glorify the military to the degree that the U.S. does. Do me a favor. Tell my children I love them very much. <laughs> Part of the American enthusiasm is certainly rooted in patriotism. Still, it may also be a reaction to an increasingly anti-military sentiment that has popped up over the last several decades. No war, good. No war, good. Oh, well, here you go, boys. These will help you protest. It's good to see that you care about peace, boys. Good. Never mind. <laughs> work too much. Good. Americans are workaholics, at least compared to basically every mm, this other one, country. This one surprised me. Yeah, majority I remember this of Americans one. work more than 40 hours a week. Why do we do this to ourselves? Well, the conventional answer is that this attitude towards work makes the American economy the envy of the world. America is a hectic, turbocharged system that builds, destroys, rebuilds all at warp speed. They also tend to lack many of the things the rest of the world takes for granted, like paid holidays, as well as sick and parental leave. Wow. Research has right. shown that happier, less stressed workers do better at their jobs. Yeah, Iceland sure. even recently tried a four-day work week that proved wildly successful. Yep. There's lots of other benefits to a four-day working week. It's not just the environment, you know, it's not just the, the mental health and, and, and economy, you know, good for the economy. Also environmental benefits too. You know, evidence looks like when we're commuting less as a result of a four-day week, that brings down emissions. Also, energy consumption goes down. So this is, this is, this is a policy that's win-win for the environment, for workers, for employers. What's not to like about it? Several European countries take long breaks for lunch. While the American drive is admirable, grind culture becomes problematic when it costs workers their mental health and well-being. Number four. Put sales tax on everything. Oh, yeah, this one. Mm. Sales tax is paid when you buy something, and the business you purchased your goods from sends that money to the government. There are two types of sales tax, general sales tax and excise taxes. General sales tax is a tax levied on most goods you buy. Excise taxes are taxes levied only on certain items, 
Most countries enact a value-added tax, or VAT, on goods or services purchased within their borders. These taxes are collected from every person in the supply chain, from the distributors to the consumers. The United States is one of the few to use sales tax, which not only vary wildly from state to state, but are only enacted after a purchase has been made. The state treasury depends on sales taxes to pay for road repairs, education, and medical care and for children, seniors, and the poor yeah, at all. They're also not listed in the initial price, which can leave foreign visitors and many Americans scratching their head as to why they're being charged more than the price on the product. Better or worse, you decide. It's certainly more confusing. What's the advice then if you're gonna buy a big ticket item where is the cheapest sales tax? Well, you know, you can go online and look at all the sales tax rates for different cities. And, and if you look at one dealership or one, you know, Best Buy yeah. or something like that, you can find the different zip codes and look at the sales tax ah. rates and just see how much that a little take off and then take your family out for a nice night. There you go. Yeah. Number three, <laughs> the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. In many parts of the United States, school children and adults in some settings are expected to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. This is an expression that they will be loyal to the USA and is usually performed daily while looking at the nation's flag. In fact, then, in 1892, when it was written by Francis Bellamy, Bellamy was a Baptist minister, mm -hmm. and in, um, in conjunction with a magazine called The Youth's Companion, uh, he wrote this uh, at that time, 23 word Pledge of Allegiance. Citizens of other countries might respect or salute their flag and country, but a daily affirmation? Not in most places. Mm. The Pledge of Allegiance has been the subject of controversy and criticism, both from outside the US and from within. Some see it as indoctrination. Others find its mentions of God problematic, and still others think it was simply written to sell merch. Whatever the case, it is not a common thing in the rest of the world. But the bottom line is, um, we all look different, sound different, but we are all on the same team. Number two, go bankrupt from healthcare. Mm. Medical costs oh, are yeah. the cause of over 60% of all bankruptcies oh, in the United States. Hectic. In 2017, one third of the money raised on GoFundMe went towards medical campaigns. Mm. Wow. And the site raises $650 million a year for more than 250,000 medical campaigns. Wow. Americans experience a variety of unexpected charges while getting much needed care from surprise bills to being charged for riding in an ambulance. According to one study, 71% of all ambulance providers do not take the patient's insurance. That same study found that 79% of patients who took an ambulance could get a surprise bill, with an average total around $450. In some parts of the civilized wow. world, even seeing a medical bill can be an uncommon occurrence. Healthcare worldwide tends to be much more regulated than it is in the US. It's either funded through taxes in a single payer system or else through individual insurers who are more strictly monitored. Other countries, they, they don't have this problem. Instead of every private insurance company negotiating with every healthcare provider, mm. there's just this big list. Country, the central government, they go and they say, if you want to sell to us, to all of our people, then here's what you can charge for a checkup. Here's what you can charge for an MRI or a prescription for Lipitor. Bottom line, while there can sometimes be extra charges for most of the world, medical debt is basically unheard of, except in horror stories about the US. Can't get a credit card. I can't buy a house. I don't see me ever being able to do it. Before we get mm. to our top pick, here are mm. some honorable mentions. Free refills, yeah. yeah. Restaurants will fill up glasses with even more drinks for free That's and uncle. with lots of ice. Burger King here still does it. Yeah. Still got free refills here at one place. Throw baby showers. Many cultures see them as bad luck or in poor taste. We have them here. We do that. Mm -hmm. In fact, Denzel, you need a shower soon, don't you? <laughs> Weird shoes <laughs> indoors. Sure, not every American does this, but it's still considered weird in a lot of countries. We we wear shoes indoors. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're not that fast about. Unless they're dirty. Yeah. Advertise drugs to consumers. We advertise drugs to consumers. Companies clout allows the only other country with them. Basically, with America. everyone but them. These ads are legal in most countries, but in the U.S., they're everywhere. On average, eighty of them air every hour on American television. Wow. Ask your doctor. Ask your doctor. My doctor told me. <laughs> Use red plastic cups for alcohol. 
decided on these for every American party? Classic. This is just more of a, like a movie thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, no, I think they actually do use them. No, I know, but like made popular by the movies. Oh, okay, yeah. You know? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one. Number one. Use the Imperial yes. Measurement System. Yeah. Can you explain to me yes. how the country that can send um, men and hopefully women to the moon yeah, all and still beyond. are in gallons and inches? Mm. And when the entire world is metric, I do not understand this. There are three countries in the world. Time to join the rest of the world, the guys. <laughs> Myanmar, Liberia, and the United States. Mm -hmm. Objectively, metric is the less arbitrary measurement system since everything goes by tens. Even hmm. Britain and Commonwealth countries have converted. The point is, the U.S. system has always been a little more accessible than metric. Sure, stacking up twelve thumb widths to make a foot. That's still kind of weird, but it's not so weird that we're clamoring to change it. Although, admittedly, they do still use measurements like feet and inches casually. So now I can't ask a distance when I visit another country. I'm like, how far is that? They're like, that's 500 kilometers. I'm not in the Olympics. So, <laughs> US converted. We'll give you one guess. Did you say it's because of money? Because money is definitely a big factor. Mm. Converting to a whole new system it of measurements is It would cost a lot. Expensive. Other factors include a need for control and stability of the U.S. So, inertia, basically. Why change when you don't need to? Mm. You know what your mom says. If all the other countries jumped off a bridge, would the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> she, like she did say that. A 2015 Rasmussen poll asked Americans if we should switch to the metric system and adopt Celsius as our main temperature scale. 64% said no, while 21% said yes, and the remaining 15% was undecided. So it looks like we're perfectly fine with being different. Yep. Do you agree with That's our picks? Check out the I list. actually go both <laughs> systems because yeah. Yeah. when I'm schooled and we have an American... Curriculum. Curriculum. Yeah. So I can learn both. So. She know, yeah, these but kids know both. Also on top of that, all the recipes and stuff that you're doing for Atlanta's Kitchen. Yeah. You have to do like, you know, different measurements and stuff like that for different things. I uh, didn't the subscribers mm -hmm. send a conversion chart as well? So you can just convert. Yeah. Or do Americans yeah. measure in cups and stuff as well? Or do they no, no they do like they ounces? They do like ounces and stuff. And stuff. Yeah. Ounces and pounds. But there's usually on every website an option to change that. Yeah. So oh, okay. you can yeah. just switch to different metrics. Yeah. Uh, but definitely okay. confusing. Yeah. Um having those two systems. Yeah, I know, that's crazy. Yeah. Wow. I knew most of those. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, I, I didn't know most well of them. we're well-schooled now. I, the medical um, debt was pretty crazy. That's really crazy. That's one thing we haven't really looked into a lot is, yeah. yeah a lot of people have medical debt. I guess we take that, for, you know, for granted. Yeah, here. in New Zealand it's more like if you want to, like, get your teeth fixed or... Like that can Cosmetic be like big payments. Pay, yeah, for but yourself. if you have an accident, you, you know, you break your arm or like you know need like like life saving surgery, that's all covered. It's under something called ACC, which is Accident Compensation Cover. Mm. But every business actually has to pay ACC as a levy. Yeah. So um, you put in a little bit per year, and it's done like how much you pay is depends on how risky your job is. So oh, they okay. assess, so when I was a photographer, it was yeah. a very low risk job because I wasn't, you know. So you didn't have to put much in. So I didn't have to pay very much. Yeah. But if I was like a painter or someone on a scaffolding or whatever. Window cleaner. Yeah, yeah, then your business has to pay a lot more for each of your employees. Because statistically, you're more likely to yeah. contribute to the accidents right. and everything every year. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, you do put, but that's for accidents. Yeah. But for anything else, illnesses or whatever, most of our public system is funded, I guess, through taxpayer dollars. Yeah. 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 Or heavily reduced. Yeah, or heavily reduced. Yeah, yeah. like medication and stuff. Yeah. Anyway, guys, uh, that was very interesting. Uh, we did know quite a few of them, but were there, there were still some shockers there. Yeah, there were some surprises. Yeah, and so if you enjoyed that one, make sure you smash the like button. And also comment down below. Let us know if uh, you guys still agree with the... Or if you guys want to switch to the metric system. Yeah, you're welcome to join us. <laughs> you're welcome to join us. <laughs> <laughs> and also make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and hit the post notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. And also if you want to check out our merch, make sure you go check the link out down in the description below. Yes. And also we're over on Instagram. Go take a look over there. And yeah. we're also over on Patreon. Yeah. Go take a look over there. And also we love you guys and we'll see you in the next one. Bye! Bye.